Seven years ago, I fell in love with an Australian. Don't get me wrong, I love Australia, but I'd come to associate New South Wales with busy streets, tricky hunting access, and unnaturally long sporting events. That was until I met Nigel Milgate. Nigel is a proud man of the Nimba Nation with deep roots to his ancestral lands. For the last decade, Nigel has worked within indigenous communities across Australia, where he empowers people through culture, education, employment, and youth suicide prevention. I'd met him through mutual friends and immediately took him up on his offer to learn more about his culture. So today we're, where we just come from is a little place called Wollombi. Sort of, um, Wollombi is the, the meaning for where two rivers meet and we're actually heading up <clears throat> into a national park called Yengo National Park. We're going to go and see a few um, ancient Aboriginal sites. When you say ancient, how old do you mean? Uh, old, so anywhere from 5,000 years old. Oh. Yeah, so they've all been protected under the national parks um, and documented and researchers come out here and do what they do. And um, yeah, they, they've been documented to be at least, you know, 5,000 years old. So, which is almost, I think, as old as the Egyptian pyramids. They're around five to 7,000 years old. Which is with the Sydney Golden Wattle, when that starts to blossom and flower, you'll see the mullet fish running, but I'm pretty sure you'll also see um, the caterpillars start to move around in their, in their lines too, which also indicates that the mullet fish are moving around. They're either going into breed, coming out to breed, moving, something like that, but that, like that wattle and nature, for Aboriginal people, that was our clock so to speak. That was the, an, an indicator of what was happening in our country. And our people were so connected to the land, you know, hear that connection to country you'd hear in Australia about our people. That without, you know, without those trees, that they, we couldn't understand what's happening, you know, so. Our goal had been to find somewhere quiet to sit down and record a podcast, but the day quickly got away from us as we bounced from site to site. <clears throat> That would be an indicator that there was something around here, something that took place that had let the local mob um, identify that there was maybe something special around this area. But also, <clears throat> you know, we're not just one-dimensional, so we wouldn't just cut that out and not use it. So you think that was cut out, not natural? No, that's cut. That's hun- I've cut them out before. Yeah, that's 100% cut out. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just naturally... No, so that's cut out, so people would have cut that out. And you make a big uh, dish or little canoes or containers out of it. Yeah. So when you say there's something special around here... There's something special around here. As we prepared to go into a hidden sacred site, Nigel plucked yellow eucalyptus leaves so that we could cleanse ourselves before entering. So we're going to go and visit a couple of uh, like sacred places and we're going to smoke ourselves before we get on those, onto, uh, onto those sites and those sacred places. What I'll get you to do is, is anything that ne- you've had you know, negative in your life or you might be going through some troubled times at the moment is when you get into this smoke and start like bathing in the smoke, Think about and talk about putting that into the smoke. Okay. And that smoke will take that up to that mineral booker, to that milky way. Mm-hmm. And then old people will, will take care of that for you. Okay. All right? Deal. Deal. So again, this is ancient. This has been used for, you know, since the beginning of time. So what, in other sort of reasons, you know, for when ceremonies were taking place, they would smoke to keep negative energies away, negative... You know, there's good things, there's also bad things in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's common um, in any sort of indigenous practice or story. Smoking ceremonies, you know, they're not something to be mucked around with. If you if I put that wrong leaf on there and you come here and you breathe it in, you die. And it can turn to poison very quick. It's, it taps into that spiritual world as well, class in our in our beliefs. Um, our grandfather, like Uncle Paul, has been talking about, he says, you know, it's like a shower. You can get in there and stand under the water and just let the water hit you, you know, but you're probably not going to be as clean as someone that's got in there and accepted and been open-minded and 
used it, you know, for what it's what it's meant for. So as I said, you know, we're going to go and visit some ancient places, some special places, and the spirit of those places is is still alive. You know, it's still there. It's not dead, or it's not not real, you know, it's, a, it, it's as very much as alive as what I am here today. <sighs> okay. Cool. I'm ready. Here, can you turn that camera off for a sec? Yeah. I just... Nigel explained that a lot of what he was sharing with me couldn't be filmed. A stipulation that, honestly, only made our time together more special. I'm just in awe right now. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to turn the corner and see a cave, but it's another to see all those handprints. Okay, what's the story? So that would be a mark of people coming and sort of like signing in the country, sort of, you know, you go into a school or an office and you sign your name and it says that you were there at a certain time and all that. This would be, this is the same practice. So because people would come back to these spots and have that connection or we're going to use this area for to give us something we want to connect with it just don't t don't touch it because your oil's in your hand muck around with the ochres and, and it'll remove or damage it so we just, be, just be careful that is so incredible i think this person and i were a fit Probably. Could be. So it's like, it's just a sand that you've mixed with water. It's it's more than that, you know. Like it's it's something that connects us to them old people. Something, you know. A lot of people say, um, in a way, it's it's a, a protection thing too. Was it used as a binding agent? So it was used. No, it's used for decoration to paint our bodies oh. for ceremonies and song and dance. So yeah. <clears throat> Traditionally, what you do is like our clan group or our people would have a, a special design, and when we come to um, corroborees or ceremony, we would paint our bodies in that design, and that'd indicate where we're from. Well done. What's the significance when I see a lot of the Aboriginal art? Yeah, so they'll paint. It's dots. Yeah, so dots, dots sort of come, can represent many things. The dots, the dot painting traditionally in Australia, or what we now know as Australia, comes from a little place up in the Northern Territory, so where the first sort of dot paintings were originated, a little place called Papunya. And I've had, I've spent time up there. I've spent time in a lot of communities across Australia. Yeah. But. I always make sure that I share the story of those people because that's what as Aboriginal people we have an obligation to make sure we look after our other pe our brothers and sisters. And so yeah, the dot painting it, it originated from a little place called Papunya, I think west of Alice Springs. Okay, would they have used this to keep bugs off or sun off? Yeah, many different things, hunting purposes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I keep saying that we're not just one dimensional. Yeah. So, you know, like on that note, <clears throat> like killing hunting, for instance, if we killed a kangaroo and I just took the back legs and the back straps back to the thing, I would be punished severely. I'd be punished because there's a skin there, there's sinew in the bones for weaponry, you can use the bones for certain things, you know. You can yeah. eat almost every part yeah, of it. Yeah. You, what? Not almost, you can eat everything. So yeah, so this place here, they call it the map site, and it tells a big story about people coming together from all different sort of language groups and, and, and tribal groups coming together for ceremony up here and, and, and connecting with our culture. And um, What you're gonna see is some engravings in, in the rock. I think they talk about them being around 5,000 plus years old. Again, you know, like <clears throat> age is irrelevant. It's about the story and what, what comes of the story. So 
everything we sort of do as Aboriginal people um, has a purpose and a meaning to it. We don't just do things, you know, to have fun. You know, we have fun doing those things, of course, but everything is not just to have fun. But again, as I was saying before, you know, there's old roads like this and, and roads you'll see um, as you explore Australia. Again, there are them old walking tracks of where them old people walked once upon a time and just the you know the convicts in the in the um the the settlers and the red coat guys they, they i presume they would have just followed them old black fellas and just made their roads and you'll see that out at wallenby is that you know that road you come in from sydney yeah that's all on the side of that road you see old cobblestones yeah that's from the convicts made that old road yeah they built that road from here to sydney cool. okay yeah so it's all that history up here but again that's only less than 250 years old this stuff is ancient just be careful where you step you know try not to touch anything there's no need to touch anything we can visually see everything um and, and go from there so what is this i'm a person a uh, man of of sorts yeah so how we explain this is that uh this gentleman is what we call the protector or the guardian of this of this site. Um, there's many ways you, you, you can tell that. Obviously, you can tell that he's a man, um, but another way you can sort of tell is that he's got that boomerang. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's a boomerang. So it's he's not holding that boomerang. That's actually a part and an extension of his arm. So his arm is the boomerang we talk about that connection to everything in this world you know that that boomerang is a part of him and what that says is that if you come here and do this sort of stuff those yellow lines that he will use those boomerangs and you might i'm not talking about physically you know hitting you with the boomerang but i'm sure those people that have desecrated that site will have some troubles in their story pretty soon which is unfortunate you know like we've got those signs there um, that indicate how special this is and and the fines too you know that's a twenty thousand dollar fine yeah and people like they don't even care and that's the sad thing about this you know this is why we've got to bring people here this is why it's important to share and, and connect people to this place even yourself, someone that's not indigenous to this place, you have connection here now. You know, you have an obligation because we've come here and we've, we've shared this story um, and connected and built a relationship with one another and with this place. What comes from a relationship is responsibilities and obligations then. You know, to respect one another, to respect this place. And unfortunately, you know, Australia and some of the world are so disconnected from relationships and afraid, really, of building relationships that they think that it's fun. It's probably kids, you know what I mean? But what does that tell you about what their parents are teaching them then? No respect. As the sun began to set, we wrapped up our day with a boomerang lesson that served as a reminder that I should stick to throwing fly lines. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Oh, God, I'm going to do it. Uh, yeah. I'm the worst thrower in the world. That's okay. Can you do it lightly? Yeah. Or does it have to go far? Oh my God, no, I'm gonna kill someone. Huh? No, I think I'm good. I'm good. Oh, just have a go. All right, but duck. It's, yeah. So what we say is, if it looks like it's coming back to you. Duck. <laughs> but keep your eyes on it. Don't turn and run. So, so when you throw, you've got to put your left foot out and follow through. Oh, and put so your cool. arm out. Put your left arm out. Yeah, oh, like for momentum? Yeah, so like... Okay. All right, and, and, ha and throw it. On an angle this way or straight? Not straight. Yeah, not that much of an angle. This much of an yeah, angle? Yeah, there. Yep. It did a bit of a curve. It, it, yeah, yep. We could be here all night doing this. Night. If that's what you want to call it, yeah. <laughs> Get into it, throw it like you like you should be able to throw it as. There oh, we go. It's fun. It's coming back. There we around. go. It didn't come back, but 
but it but did it, turn. it was turning, it would have come back. It's dangerous for those that don't know how to use them, yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Oh god. I think it's going to be one of those things that we practice. <laughs> but thank you though. Oh god. Come back. Okay. <laughs> I walked away from my time with Nigel with a whole new appreciation for Australia and the people who roamed this great landscape long before us. We just want people to have a, a, a greater understanding about who we are, what we've come through, and walk with us on a journey to what lies ahead.